Hi, and welcome to a new season of Newsmakers. For inside analysis and behind the scenes commentary about the most important news events in our community, from Santa Barbara's top journalists and political leaders, I'm Jerry Roberts. Tonight, we look behind these headlines. The deadliest disaster in Santa Barbara history kills 34 and leaves the community in shock. Mayor Kathy Murillo shakes up a political year already unsettled by an insurgent challenge to an incumbent supervisor. And City College seeks a new president to help settle a year of turmoil. Our panel tonight, Lizzie Rodriguez, member of the Fire and Police Commission. Delaney Smith, reporter for the Santa Barbara Independent. Josh Molina, who covers politics and policy for NewsHawk, and Nick Welsh, executive editor of The Independent. Thank you all for coming. Well, the explosion, fire, and catastrophe of the scuba diving boat uh, conception has everybody's mind, uh, is on everybody's mind. So before we start, we're going to have uh, just look at some images of the boat and the aftermath uh, and take a couple seconds of silence. That last image was taken by uh, Michael Iason of the Santa Barbara County uh, Fire Department in January of the conception with a rainbow behind it. It's very touching. We also thank Paul Wellman of the Santa Barbara Independent for those images and the Ventura County Fire Department. So, Lizzie, this is one of those stories that people will never forget. Um, how did you find out? Was there talk uh, within the emergency services department, or, or how did you learn about it? I heard like everyone else um, on the news, social media, and it really struck my heart and, and gut-wrenching, really. I think it's fair to say that everyone has a strong connection to the harbor, whether if you're a boat person, if you've gone on trips, if you've been by for Fourth of July, we, we all, it's it's a part of our family structure, I think, to, to see the, to, to be around the harbor and to hear this news is just devastating. Um, the, 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 Enforcement there is actually kind of complicated. There's, um, it was in the city of Santa Barbara, but it's also in the jurisdiction of the uh, county sheriff office as well as the um, marine. Uh, what is that called? The Coast Guard. The, the Coast Guard. The Guard. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. So there's a lot of different entities yeah. involved. So Delaney, uh, I'm sure you know we were all emotionally affected, but you have to sort of transition right away, and you're editing the the stories in the Independent this week about it. Um, there was a huge amount of speculation and bad information that was out there. How do you kind of get in the mindset of a journalist to make sure that doesn't make its way into print? Yeah, uh, so this is body count wise like the biggest disaster in Santa Barbara history. So until the preliminary reports come out, it's, it's just not something that um, there's not any room for speculation on something like this. Um, so getting, making sure that what little facts there are or all that are out there is what really matters. Yeah, I thought the lead story was very well edited. It was very, very factual and direct and to the point. And I'm sure it didn't come in that way. I named no names. But um, so, Josh, you had other plans for Labor Day. You were going to take the morning off and uh, then go cover Kathy Murillo's <laughs> announcement uh, of her legislative candidacy. But what happened? Well, I kept my plans, and I, I did both. I <clears throat> obviously... When you have a story like this happen, you have to cover it. You have to jump. Breaking news trumps all, and so this was happening. So I covered it, um, tried to f get information at a time when very little information was available. Uh, but I did have plans to cover the Democrats' Labor Day picnic because it's a big day because Laura Capps was going to show up, Kathy Maria was going to make an announcement. But the event changed the mood, changed the vibe of the picnic. So. People were pretty subdued, so it wasn't an event that was just 
in itself on an island. It was something that affected all the news that was happening that day. Yeah, and then you were kind of the one-man band for a while at the Independent. You had to go to the office and start doing. What's what's the latest on the? Well, I have to story. say that really the one-man band uh, who really held the fort down was Gene Yamamura. And uh, I was sort of a Johnny come lately, show up late uh, after the um, uh, Labor Day picnic. And uh, so Gene was the first one to post it. But what's happening now is that um, the National uh, Traffic Safety Board, NTSB, they have 16 Transportation, tra National tra NTSB, yeah, yeah. yeah. And they have 16 agents in town trying to find out what happened, why it happened, and how that can be prevented. Um, it's going to take them about 12 to 18 months to come up with their final report, but they hope to have something more preliminary uh, within 10 days. Um, but so today what they did is they were investig they were talking to and, and questioning uh, the surviving crew members, the, the five crew members. <clears throat> and uh, tomorrow I think they're going to be talking with the first responders and uh, the owners of the, uh, the Good Samaritan owners of the other vessels who, uh, which the uh, five surviving crew members um, fled. Um, so uh, they have their work cut out for them. Uh, at this point, one body remains unaccounted for. Um, and so you have the uh, sheriff's deputy, uh, or the sheriff is the coroner, and so you have 33 bodies um, at the coroner's office. Um, it's able to handle 20, so you have LA Medical Examiner having donated a couple of uh, makeshift coolers and some personnel to help determine the cause of death and um, who the identity is. What's the, quickly, what's the kind of latest uh, uh, assumption about how things, how it's got started? You know what, it's all speculation at this point. I mean, Sheriff Bill Brown isn't even confirming you know, you know, what role, if any, an explosion had. A lot of people who have had a history in being you know, on the waterfront and captaining boats like this say, you know, a fire like that could not have happened as fast and as furious as it did without an explosion. The most intriguing line of inquiry I've heard has to do with um, lithium ion batteries, uh, which allegedly, and again unconfirmedly, were in the second level in the salon or the galley being recharged for the night for the last day's uh, trip. A lot of high-end uh, photographic equipment needs these batteries, and those batteries notoriously heat up such that airlines will not let them in the cargo hold of their uh, planes. There were like 46 events like this in the last year. So they are a, a clearly understood danger, and you know, that's the most yeah. sort of, in, but again, none of that is confirmed. Yeah, well, I mean, you, you said it in your story, you know, that's, that's the deadliest disaster in Santa Barbara history, not just maritime, not just recent history period. And, and we've had enough, you know, we, we've had our fair share, and so. Well, I think we'll see some policy changes after this in regards to how equipment will be handled on, on boats and even maybe how occupancy will be handled. All right. All right. Well, the news goes on. And as you said, you went to the Labor Day picnic, Josh, um, to see Mayor Kathy Murillo, who Nick scooped, is running uh, for state senate, the seat being uh, left vacant by Hannah Beth Jackson. I don't. What, I don't really recall say? seeing that story. I just well, that's they, focus they, on what I'm. I doing, know you got to read other <laughs> publications. I actually don't read. I just reread. I don't all read other stuff. publications until I'm the same way. Sunday I night. You know, okay. Otherwise, anyway, I just get so what Kathy had to say? So Kathy uh, had had told Nick and had told me uh, that she was planning to run for state senate. She's she's thinking about it. Uh, she's contemplating it, and so. She was going to announce it at the party, at the Labor Day picnic, because it was going to be a day of, of uh, fiery political speeches, right? So she was going to talk. So 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 she was going to she was going to do that. And uh, Gail Teton Landis, the morning of, put out an email. The Democratic Party chair. Yeah, your your friend, you know, your close associate. She, you know, she she asked. She's a source. She wanted to change 
the event to be more about uh, a time to gather because of the, the boat tragedy. So everybody held back. Nobody talked. Nobody decided to give their um, rousing political speeches. Okay? Uh, Doss Williams did talk. He did not say anything other than, uh, you know, we need to come together as a community because of events like this. So, so Kathy is telling everybody that she's thinking about running and she's going to run for state senate if Monique Lamone decides she's not to. I think it's very clear Monique is, is probably not going to run for senate because Kathy's going to look really foolish if she's going around telling everybody that she's running for that seat. But she and told you she's running, right? No, but she said... Mulling was She the, said, I'm thinking about it, but I've never seen anybody so excited to be thinking about something. <laughs> I mean, poor Kathy. I mean, it's like every time she has an event, it's like going to be really like, Okay, I'm going to announce, boom, you have this horrific disaster. Then she gets sworn in as mayor. And what day, what day was that? January 9th, mm -hmm. the day of the mudslide. And so this is her moment, kablooey, 23 people wiped out. But the real drama of the, the barbecue was that Laura Capps showed up. And you know she's challenging Doss yeah. Williams with this. Hang on, I want to. I just want to get ask Lizzie about Kathy. So does this surprise you that Kathy again? Because she told Josh earlier that three months ago that she wasn't gonna she wasn't gonna run, but then she told Nick that she was. I mean, are you you watch City Hall pretty closely? I'm surprised. I, I was surprised when I initially heard it, but but thinking about it, no, it doesn't surprise me. She's she's had her eyes on a political career since she started City Council, and I think this is an obvious next step for her. I would have thought she would have done two terms as mayor and then moved forward. However, if the timing's right, then it's a good time to do it. And Jason Dominguez, you're covering the first uh, district district one city council race. He's also apparently going to run. Yeah, um, apparently, apparently he is. That that was news to me. But um, stay stay tuned for that because uh -huh. I will be reporting on uh, district one soon. All right, and Laura Caps is challenging Doss Williams. The battle of liberal Democrats. What was? What did she have to say at the picnic? Well, it was more of sort of watching it unfold. Doss was there early. He was greeting everybody as they were signing in. Laura showed up about half an hour after the event started, and she's she's working the the, the picnic table. She's working Oak Park. She's meeting people. She got a very good ovation. Did she? That's interesting because um, she's not, not endorsed. Doss is the endorsed candidate. Yeah, there's not a sense that she was unwelcome at all. In fact, a lot of people I talk to, uh, you know, really like her as mm -hmm. a candidate. You know, they they aren't really saying on the record who they're endorsing uh, because for political purposes and it's early. But I didn't find anybody who, other than Doraka Laramore Hall, who was outright dismissive of her. Candidacy. You, you, you give him about 12 or 14 graphs in your story mm -hmm. to be dismissive. So. Well, you know, ju just because you like to shut out people who aren't nice oh, to you, no, I'm doesn't the, mean I, I, I do I, the I, same. I, I, you know? I put, I put the rocker in my story. But no, it was, <laughs> so you waxed poetic about Laura's uh, uh, campaign launch. I understand she used to roll down the hill in Mission Park. Oh. What, what's your take on this race? You know, my initial reaction is I'm sort of exhausted before it's even started. Uh, I mean, you have two really good, solid, liberal, progressive, Democrats, environmentalists, social justice, blah, 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 you know, running against each other. And you go, okay, aside from personality and ambition, um, what what really sets one apart from the other, and at this point, you know, cannabis is like the key wedge issue, and is that really enough? I mean, Das has obviously looked a little bit eager uh, in terms of uh, helping the cannabis industry out, and that doesn't play well in, in Carpinteria, where he lives. But, you know, you really kind of look at this, and then you look at what's going on with the Democrats nationally, and you go, man, I've seen this. I've seen this movie, and it doesn't always end well. Don't you agree with me, though, that Nick is really missing the big issue that's hiding in plain sight, which is gender, 
which is oh, well, you know, Doss actually, and the Mansplainers versus Laura, who's running as a leader who listens. Yes, and I think that's key. I, I think DeRocca pointed out in his, in, your, in his quotes in your article that um, Doss has stepped forward to help other Democrats get elected. Um, sometimes they were elected, sometimes they weren't. I think he, in that sense, is part, he's a party guy. He is, he is um, promoting the party, he votes with the party, he, he runs along party lines. You're not gonna find that with Laura. I think you'll find Laura who will listen to her constituents and vote for what they what is interesting for them, what, what's important for them. And I think that's where you're gonna see the separation between these two progressive liberal candidates. I guarantee you, if Laura Capps wins, I mean, that's a little bit of a simplistic way of looking at it, right? First of all, Das is not I mean, Doss came up on his own. He did not come up as a party guy. Eventually, the party embraced him because mm -hmm. they're like, wow, this guy works really hard. I thought really he hard. came up working for Hannah Beth. No, before that, he, was, he sort of crashed the party, and the party had to accept him. Yeah. So the party embraced him, and uh, he's the hardest working elected official in the county by far. I mean, Laura. Oh, oh is that right? By, everyone will type by, by far. He is not uh, Angel Martinez, who's this delegating hey, hey, people to knock on doors. Das is the first guy. You mean to as knock a campaigner? And for himself and for and for, and others. for others. As a campaigner. Yeah, but I mean, not it's it's a... really about the Caps brand versus the Democratic Party yeah. brand. And and Laura very much has has had so much sort of kind of handed to her. She's on the school board, she was appointed, she's never had to run, she has that name, um, she's been on the national stage. She has gotten this far, and is she really different than Doss? Loyal but, viewers may note that Laura is not here because of our policy that we don't have candidates uh, appearing. Excuse me, go ahead. So it's really about that, and uh, the Caps name goes really far. I mean, people are gonna vote for Laura, and, and uh, she hasn't really offended people in a really big way yet, like, like, like Doss, Doss has. has with the cannabis issue. Uh, but I think if you're looking at it today, you can't really say that Laura's not going to be a party person. Uh, she hasn't had the opportunity. I mean, she, she, we don't know. She's not been embraced but, by the but, party. But until recently, the Caps brand was really kind of inseparable from the local Democratic Party. I mean, party. That is I mean really that was, she was, was the most visible. What's really was interesting. Her is that, yeah, you, you have, um, what is really the party? Is it, is, is it the Caps who are, are sort of holding up the party on the dance floor, or is it the Democrats who are holding up the Caps? And they really kind of coexisted, and this is the first time they're really going to separate, so it's going to be interesting to see which has more sort of structural integrity um, as, as opposed to the other kind of integrity that Laura talked about all the time. What were you going to say? I think that we're, we're seeing this take place on a national level when it comes to parties, that you have those that have worked up the party and done the, the right steps to get to where they are, and then you have folks that step in that may think differently, may vote differently, but they, they represent the new Democrat. And, and, and Laura, I mean, it's interesting. I mean, Laura Caps was very big in terms of helping to get Kristen Sen elected. Mm -hmm. And so Kristen Sen, who was a good Democrat, but was uh, shunned by the Democratic exactly. Party, mm -hmm. so she comes in. And then when uh, Darcel Elliott, Doss's assistant, ran for City College, I, I think Laura was a big supporter of uh, Kroeninger, Marsha. Marsha Kroeninger, the incumbent on the school board. So, you know, it's not that she doesn't help out other candidates. I think she does. I think it's just that within the Democratic Party, there is sort of a, a tension, particularly, you know, uh, the women's wing of the party, I think, has uh, had a... Yes, you've a, lurched into the truth. And... and uh, You've left Kate Ford on the, on the oh, school board yeah, out Kate of that Ford. group as well. And Hannah Beth is kind of, you know... And Hannah back. Beth is definitely like... I, I, Hannah Beth has her own mind, and just because Daraka says jump, she does not say how high. Mm -hmm. And she's quite... Uh, actually, I mean, this particular... She's going to stay out of this one. She'll stay out of this one, or we'll see. But I know she actually would really like to see um, Monique actually run for, um, for the Senate. state senate and not have this 
sort of uh, shows a lot. Is there any chance that Doss will change his mind and run for the Senate? I don't think so. I think he's pretty firm and committed. He's got a couple kids, and it's much easier to be a supervisor here when you're raising a family than going back and forth to Sacramento. All right. And uh, what about Salute? What's he going to do in this? Salute Carver Hall, our noted Congress you know, person, I, I, woman. He's going to wait to the very last <laughs> minute. And then, <laughs> but he's facing a stiff challenge from Andy Caldwell. Who is Andy Caldwell? Andy Caldwell is the voice of Colab, the Coalition of uh, Labor, Agriculture, and Business. It's sort of a conservative right-wing business uh, group. He shows up at the Board of Supervisors every Tuesday, whether they do or not. He's got something to say on just about every subject. He writes a column in the news press. He's, on, he's a regular on their talk show. Um, he is sort of the voice of conservatism in Santa Barbara. And, you know, I'm, I'm in awe of his stamina. I am in awe of his ability to craft a message which is just outrageous enough to be sort of... Is he um, a Trump guy? No, I wouldn't say that. Um, he'll be more... You'll, you'll want to paint him in that corner, but Andy, I think, is a, is a conservative on his own right, in his own terms. Um, he'll definitely lean much more that way. He's very anti-regulatory, and he'll be, um, he loves the sound of his own voice, and he's going to have a ball on the debate platform, and frankly, I think he's going to wipe the floor with Salute, who isn't... A, not in, not in not the election. Great, not in the election, in the, on the debate platform. The debates won't really matter. Salute is a much better politician, and he knows what he's doing. Why would Salute, why would Salute debate him? I don't know. I don't know. Good question. So... Debated Justin Fareed. Well, that's yeah. different. That's like debating a coat hat. My point. I mean, well, you do not like him. Right? We, we need to run clips of every insult Nick's ever made on Justin Fareed. Yes. So Delaney, so so I guess the independent reporting staff has divided up the city council races, and you get District One, mm -hmm. which is the east side where incumbent Jason Dominguez. Who else is running over there? Um, to be quite honest, Alejandra, 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 Alejandra Gutierrez, and Crusito Cruz, and Crusito Cruz, and will I have that? And Crusito is one of the people who got us district elections in the first place. Mm -hmm. He was one of the plaintiffs who um, got the lawsuit going, and we are now four years out of actually having district elections for the city of Santa Barbara. It's and working out real. And I think that it's, as blessings go, it's a mixed, <laughs> mixed bag. Uh, it's like we got a city council that's all electrons and no nucleus. And, uh, that's a way of putting it. Yeah. <laughs> well, now, would you edit that out if he said that, or you let him say that? Oh, of course, I'd let him say yeah. it. That's, that's poodle. That would be that's really poodle. nice. Well, be, he can say whatever, <laughs> yeah. he, he, can say whatever he wants in the poodle. And then you're doing District 2? I mean, yeah, yeah, I guess yeah. I am. Yeah. yeah. And what's what's going on over oh, there? Oh, this is called two? the Mesa and the East. The Mesa. Please. So yeah, the, the Mesa simplified. is interesting. So we have Randy Rouse, who's been there like since Methuselah, and he is stepping down because he's been term limited out. And so we're actually having a real race. It's five people. Five people. It's um, it's interesting. You have uh, Michael <laughs> Jordan, who is sort of uh, ambidextrous. Um, you know, if if it was if his political inclinations were sexual leanings, you would say he was he was everything. Wow. He was very fluid. Wow, Nick. How's that? <laughs> I had no idea you knew. Wow. Did you? <laughs> you didn't bring the HR handbook. <laughs> So, so, so Michael has got the Democratic. Let me put it this way, okay? You know, this is a family show, right? Michael Jordan has crossover appeal. He appeals to the business types, the conservatives. He's endorsed by the Democratic Party. He's a Nick Welsh whisperer. He, <laughs> he can get along well with everybody up and down the spectrum. Go and on. he can argue with himself. But he's running against Terry Jory. And, and Terry Jory, I think, the way to describe her, she's the Marion Williamson of... Uh, you agree with that characterization? She's an anti-vaxxer? I don't... No, it's just sort of how she conveys herself. There's sort of a... Are you saying that a, a, ethereal, a, a, a ethereal quality? We need to change the heart before we can change politics. That's sort of what kind of comes across. Also, she, Brian Campbell, <laughs> Tavis. What's Tavis? Tavis Boise. Tavis, Tavis Boyce. Bo he's Tavis, Tavis, Tavis Boyce. Tavis Boyce has. He's like the and better O'Rourke. Esparza. He, Tavis is the better O'Rourke 
uh, of this race. Beto O'Rourke wishes he was Tavis. Tavis has a picture of himself <laughs> surfing inside the wave wearing a button-down suit. He totally pulls it up. I don't know how far that's going to get him, maybe 3%. You can watch our, uh, our conversation with the District 2 student uh, candidates, uh, which is in our archives. So can we go back to Delaney's, um, the race she's covering? So Alejandro Gutierrez, by the way, you know Stephanie Langsdorf? She's no longer is, is no longer She's out. Them. There's, there is a story there. What, um, is, you know, what is it? You're going to have to, you know, gonna have to read, read, read my work. How do you know I didn't it. write it? <laughs> I, I think I have a good idea that you have not read it. So she lost her campaign manager one way or the other. Was she pushed or did she jump? Yeah, the party's taking over the campaign. And, Molly. Oh, and, uh, okay. and uh, you know, Stephanie's kind of never been a party consultant in the past. And, uh, you I know, was Alejandra surprised needs that to, Alejandra got her in the first place. Yeah, I don't know how that happened, but the you party's know? taken over. I don't know. Um, and so... You're just not saying. They need to step up their campaign. They need a little more life to it. Jason's an incumbent. He's bilingual. And he has works his butt off. And he's I mean, running for Senate at the same time. <laughs> See, you get a lot of... I mean, all right, we got to... And he's running a nonprofit, and he's an attorney. All right. <laughs> Delaney. So City College returned this week. Mm -hmm. uh, they got a lot of problems, uh, we, which you've talked about a lot on the show in the past. They're looking for a new president, but they also got a big budget problem now. What's mm -hmm. the latest out there? Yeah, um, budget cuts were uh, pretty extreme, and they weren't necessarily expecting that uh, last year when they gave um, all the faculty 7% raises. 7%? Seven um, mm -hmm. Is that what you got? Um, that's correct, I believe. Um, so the new leader, they're, um, they're currently still taking applications in for the rest of the week. They're going to start screening them by the end of the month, and in October they're going to start um, the public forums for it, and the new leader is going to have to um, kind of quell all of that tension from last year with, I mean, multiple national um, national level controversies um, and they're going to have to deal with the, the budget issue um, and dropping enrollment is another issue. Um, it's consistent with state and national trends. It's an inverse relationship when job, there's more jobs, less people go to community college. Mm -hmm. But as a result, um, there's less funding for community colleges. So, and so then, saved by a recession. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the, the new leader is going to have a lot on their plate. Well, they changed the formula, right? How they, they did. Um, it's still based off of... The state to, formula for funding. Yeah. It used to just be based off of the full-time students. And however many full-time students, the more there are, the more money you get. That's still partially true, um, but it also deals a little bit with equity now and, and closing the gaps. So schools where marginalized groups of students are um, in smaller numbers getting less degrees and less transfers, um, they're going to get less money for that. So in a college like City College where we have less than 3% African Americans um, on campus, that, that greatly affects. All right. All right. Well. We'll expect you to have the scoop on who, who it's going to be, who the next president's going to be. All right. Well, thanks to uh, our panel tonight, uh, Nick Welsh, Delaney Smith, Josh Molina, and Lizzie Rodriguez. Thank you for watching. Please visit our website, newsmakerswithjr.com, to check out my blog posts on politics and media in Santa Barbara and beyond. And should your insomnia be particularly troublesome, you'll find on our YouTube channel an archive of past shows and interviews including the District 2 candidates, Oscar Gutierrez, who's running unopposed. We didn't say that, as well as Megan Harmon. And we'll have the District 1 debate coming up uh, next week. So thanks again to our director, J.P. Montalvo, to our crew, Michael, Mark, Elliot, and Erica. And as always, to our senior top-ranking, high-powered, high-energy executive producer, Hap Freund. We'll see you next time on Newsmakers.